Darkness, Blood, Disparity, the Souls games as it all. Atlas is here with its latest, Deformed Child. Be ready to breach into the guts of death and eternal night. I'm Louis, and this is Bloodborne. Bloodborne is a constant, challenging action game with RPG elements that is crucial to our gaming generation. It's a dark, sometimes horrifying game with a fetish for monstrosity and the orange atmosphere. At its core, it's the same system as Dark Soul and Demon Soul. The concept stays the same, but there is important variance. If you are a veteran, you will quickly get the hang of it. The game sets the player in a semi-modern tone of a gothic theme that resembles the architecture of a strict religious London. The atmosphere is absolutely crucial in the Souls game, from software delivers again. Casket everywhere, mutilated bodies, sacrificed creatures and mad NPCs really puts an heavy weight on the player. Seeing the architectural style from the rooftop and the lonely villages make it very dramatic and appreciable. It's a touch that is very imaginative and only reflects on the madness that plays ahead. The hunt at its skull make all living things or almost a full tier quest. The lore might be scattered around and as usual, and completely understandable, but it's unique as well. The few dialogues and the item descriptions hold most of the explanation and setting. You are armed with a trick weapon and an off-hand firearm. Your pistol, rifle or shotgun delivers small damage, but if timed correctly can interrupt an enemy and make him vulnerable to vicious attack. Even the bosses are subject to this method. The trick weapon is your main source of damage. Since in your primary hand, the weapons are original to see the least. They also have a second form now, making the attack pattern, range and damage different. All in all, it's a very nice change, even if the weapon list has been more than half, they all feel varied and unique. Weapons can also be buffed via various ways, either upgrading them or putting gems in them. The new system is also much more appreciable as you won't need to farm specific type of stone or gems and they can be removed or placed at will. Estus flask or no more, now it's blood vial, dropped by your fallen enemies. They are limited in usage and can't be upgraded so you need to use them with caution as they become rare after the first half of the game. The armor now have no weight, it's all about their defense and appearance. They are trended around leather renaissance and modern time, surrounding priests, coats of arm and other reference from those era. Finally, you can equip runes that gives you different benefits. In the end, you have all the tools to be a menacing being while keeping a touch of fashion. Graphically, if Bloodborne doesn't deliver in the super high texture or super materializing, it delivers on the design and atmospheric level. Armors, environment and monsters has a lot of personality. The blood on your apparel and weapon is a nice and disturbing addition to your advancement and the savagery of this world. Your path is also well filled and don't feel like simple level design from other games. The music shares the same story. They are not catchy, but they are well played and set key moments that adds to the game tensions. Your sense will simply enjoy it. The combat relates a lot, yet feels very different from its predecessor. Now without a shield, the fight are much faster and fluid. Dodging is responsive and necessary if you want to survive. You can rapidly deal damage, but the enemies are a lot quicker as well. A new mechanics now enables you to take back a bit of your health after being hurt by striking the enemy. Even a small frame door is open on fallen enemies. It might, however, make you greedy and making you vulnerable in the process. Leveling up on your character works the same as well, though the stats have changed a bit and are somewhat confusing for their effects. A bit more clarification will be appreciated. Bloodstains and message are also at your disposal. It gives hint on your next challenge and the traps that lays ahead. However, playing with your friend is still difficult and invading or being the prey of an invader gives a rush that feels great. The game is a lot more stable though than its predecessor, and frame drops are rare and only occur on specific occasions. 
I'm also happy to say that various patches makes the game load much quicker and various fixes make it a lot more friendly to the player. The map design is nicely assorted, but you might lose yourself in the process. I had to resolve myself to look online a few times in my first playthrough. Shortcuts are a big stress relief. The Hunter's Dream acts as a nexus, making the travel less of a chore each time you light up a lantern. And the workshop helps you manage your character gear. It's well set and makes you feel relieved and at home every time you come back. Enemies are well painted and mixed. Angry mobs, ugly giants, harassing hounds. It's a less of a medieval fantasy, but frightening nonetheless. A lot of them now has much more powerful range weapon, making you press the initiative further. The bosses are a treat. Absolutely fun to conquer, but difficult nonetheless. Only a few felt cheap. They all have patterns and style that will make you plan a strategy to defeat them. I have to say, the challenge curve is weird at times. Some will only ask for a retry, while others will ask you for an evening of frustration. Beware and be warned, it's not an easy game. However, when you dominate the beast, there is no game making you feel as accomplished. Bloodborne is worth 9.5 out of 10. It may be too challenging for some and it still suffers a bit from its network syndrome from its brothers. However, its originality, solid gameplay and immense replayability makes it one of a kind. This is a nightmare that you need to experience. So dive in the darkness and be ready for a very long night.